18 hours later, Jerena's car was found abandoned about eight miles from the Wells Fargo terminal. Victor Herrera had vanished, along with every last cent of the stolen money. Behind the headlines and beyond the borders, there are individuals whose names invoke fear, fascination, and a chilling sense of intrigue. They are the most wanted criminals, elusive figures whose nefarious deeds have earned them a place on the world's watch lists. It's a high-stakes game of cat and mouse, fueled by power, betrayal, and the fight for freedom. Jesse James, the notorious outlaw of the American Wild West, epitomized the duality of legend and infamy. Born in 1847 in Missouri, James was raised in the turbulent era of the Civil War where the state was sharply divided between Union and Confederate sympathizers. Influenced by his family's pro-Confederate stance and the violence inflicted upon them by Union militia, James was drawn into the conflict at a young age. Joining guerrilla bands like the one led by Bloody Bill Anderson, James participated in brutal acts of warfare, including the infamous Centralia Massacre. Despite sustaining a grave injury during a skirmish with Union soldiers, James survived and eventually took the oath of allegiance to the Union. However, his inclination towards violence and rebellion remained undiminished. This propensity for criminal behavior led him to form the notorious James Younger Gang, which embarked on a spree of bank and train robberies across the Midwest. James' flair for theatrics and the support of sympathetic newspaper editors helped to craft a narrative that portrayed him as a modern-day Robin Hood, stealing from the rich to give to the poor. This mythos, however embellished, captured the imagination of the public and cemented James' place in American folklore. Yet, like all tales of outlawry, James' story was destined for a tragic end. Betrayed by one of his own gang members, Bob Ford, James met his demise in 1882, shot in the back while unarmed. His death propelled him from a notorious criminal to a legendary figure, leaving behind a legacy shrouded in controversy and romanticized notions of rebellion against authority. Despite his criminal deeds, Jesse James remains a captivating and enigmatic figure in American history, symbolizing the complexities and contradictions of the Wild West era. Alexis Flores, a man from Honduras, was put on the FBI's most wanted list in 2007. Seven years later, he was using the name Carlos and became friends with Jorge Contreras from Philadelphia. There's a case in Philadelphia that should always be remembered. Contreras helped Carlos find work as a handyman. On August 3, 2000, the body of Irene de Jesus was found, along with a bloody t-shirt nearby. Five days later, her body was discovered in the basement of the empty apartment building where Carlos lived. Contreras recognized the shirt as the one he gave to Carlos, but the handyman had already run away. Flores was arrested in 2002 for another crime and sent back to Honduras. His DNA was put into the national database and later matched to the unsolved murder of De Jesus. Authorities say that Alexis Flores goes by many names and identities. Unfortunately, Flores was already gone and has remained missing, staying on the most wanted list ever since. On April 11, 2010, Victor Manuel Herrera achieved a record by spending the longest time on the FBI's most wanted list. Herrera was known as the inside man and the public face of the operation, but there were deeper layers to the story. He had been added to the list nearly 26 years earlier, on May 14, 1984, after participating in the infamous White Eagle Bank robbery, one of the largest cash heists in American history. The robbery, carried out by a guerrilla group called Los Macheteros at a Connecticut Wells Fargo depot on September 12, 1983, yielded $7 million in cash, equivalent to about $21 million today. Herrera fled to Cuba but remained on the most wanted list despite the FBI's efforts, including offering a reward of up to $1 million for information leading to his arrest. However, he was never apprehended and was removed from the list in 2016. Alton Coleman, in tandem with his partner Deborah Brown, unleashed a reign of terror during the scorching summer of 1984, leaving behind a trail of unimaginable horror. Their macabre spree of violence spanned six states as they callously snuffed out the lives of eight innocent individuals. The grim tableau of their crimes was often discovered beneath the chilling shroud of a man's corduroy jacket, serving as a grim testament to the brutality of their acts. Despite the vast geographic expanse of their killings, the investigators were confronted with a baffling mosaic of tragedy and despair. Each crime scene bore witness to the depravity of Coleman and Brown as they callously extinguished the lives of their victims, leaving communities gripped in fear and disbelief. The severity and magnitude of Coleman's crimes prompted the FBI to take unprecedented action. 
Despite the already daunting roster of the top 10 most wanted criminals, Coleman was singled out for his unparalleled malevolence, earning him the dubious distinction of being the 11th addition to this infamous list. This exceptional decision underscored the gravity of Coleman's atrocities and the urgent need to bring him to justice. Regrettably, Coleman's insatiable thirst for violence persisted, claiming the lives of two more unsuspecting individuals before the long arm of the law finally caught up with him on July 20, 1984. Subsequently, Coleman faced the full weight of justice and was sentenced to death. His final reckoning came in 2002 at the Southern Ohio Correctional Facility where he met his end with the solemn repetition of the timeless words, The Lord is my shepherd. Few crime bosses command the same level of notoriety as James's Whitey Bulger, the notorious leader of Boston's Winter Hill Gang. Bulger's reign of terror was marked by racketeering, murder, and a litany of other charges that ensured if he were ever captured, he would never see the light of day again. At the height of his infamy, Bulger held the unenviable title of being the second most wanted person by the FBI, trailing only behind the infamous Osama bin Laden. In 1994, Bulger vanished into the shadows, eluding law enforcement and sparking one of the most intense manhunts in FBI history. Finally, on August 19, 1999, he was officially placed on the FBI's most wanted list. Despite his fugitive status, Bulger's whereabouts remained a mystery for years, with sightings reported across the globe. Even with his notoriety, Bulger managed to evade capture for over a decade, living under various aliases and maintaining a low profile. His romantic entanglements, including a relationship with Catherine Gregg, earned him media attention and further fueled the fascination surrounding his elusive persona. Bulger's face became a familiar sight on television screens, featured on America's Most Wanted a staggering 16 times. However, it was a seemingly innocuous tip from a neighbor in Santa Monica that ultimately led to Bulger's downfall. Authorities were alerted to his presence, with specific details about his affection for a pet cat providing crucial information. Swiftly apprehended, Bulger was swiftly brought to justice, facing two life sentences for his crimes. In 2018, Bulger's tumultuous life came to a close at the age of 89, serving out his final days behind bars, a fitting end for one of America's most notorious crime figures. At 1.20 a.m. on July 27, 1996, a bomb detonated in Atlanta's Centennial Olympic Park, causing swift chaos and confusion. Thanks to the rapid response of security guard Richard Jewell, only one casualty occurred in the blast. However, Eric Rudolph's reign of terror was far from over. Subsequent bombings targeted two medical facilities and a lesbian bar, further adding to the panic and disorder. The aftermath of these attacks left emergency responders, including fire and police officials, scrambling to manage the situation. Tragically, Birmingham police officer Robert Sanderson lost his life in one of these subsequent attacks. Witnesses eventually identified Eric Rudolph as the perpetrator of these atrocities, leading to his placement on the FBI's most wanted list on May 5, 1998. It wasn't until 2003 that Rudolph was apprehended, found looting through a dumpster in North Carolina by a vigilant police officer. Rudolph's actions were driven by a desire for attention and he was subsequently sentenced to life in prison. Wilver Vasquez Palomino, also known as Carlos El Puerco or Carlos the Pig, is a Colombian drug lord and the leader of the National Liberation Army ELN, a guerrilla group and designated terrorist organization in Colombia. The ELN has been in conflict with the Colombian government since 1964. Vasquez Palomino is wanted for narco-terrorism, international drug distribution and is implicated in numerous kidnappings and assassinations. According to an FBI special agent, his drug labs in the Colombian jungles are responsible for up to 80% of the cocaine entering the United States. There is a $5 million reward for information leading to his arrest. Donald Eugene Fields II, known as Donnie, hails from Kentucky and is 59 years old. Previously, he worked as a tree trimmer, owned a resale store, and operated as an independent used car salesman in Missouri. However, allegations have surfaced suggesting his involvement in a child sex trafficking ring between 2013 and 2017 alongside his associate Ted Sori. Sori purportedly provided financial incentives and gifts, including motorbikes, to fields in exchange for access to a child. The identity of the child remains undisclosed for protection. Following a report to authorities in early 2022, both Fields and Sori were indicted on one count of child sex trafficking each. 
Fields, upon learning of the indictment, absconded while Sori was apprehended but pleaded not guilty. A warrant was issued for Fields' arrest and he was added to the FBI's most wanted list in May 2023. His last known location was Franklin County, Missouri, but he has ties to Kentucky and frequents Florida. Additionally, Fields has a penchant for casinos and may be accompanied by his partner, Jennifer Griggs, who is also wanted for failure to pay child support. Authorities are offering a reward of up to $250,000 for information leading to Fields' arrest. If spotted, individuals are urged to contact the FBI immediately. Rafael Caro Quintero, the former leader of the Guadalajara cartel, was wanted for multiple murders, prompting a reward of $20 million for his capture. However, an unexpected hero emerged in the form of a dog who sniffed him out while he was hiding in a bush. Quintero was subsequently apprehended and as of the latest update, he awaits extradition back to the United States. This concludes the current roster of individuals on the FBI's 10 most wanted list, detailing their crimes and recent developments. Stay tuned for future updates as new fugitives may join the list. To any fugitives watching, consider this a friendly reminder to turn yourself in. Your cooperation is appreciated. Thank you for watching and your continued support means a lot. If you enjoyed watching this video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel for more videos.